On this railway adventure, a lasting impression of the Ice Age and Captain Cook's port of call as we travel the North Yorkshire Moors Railway and British Rail. Hi, I'm Bernie Coppell. Just up the tracks, William the Conqueror's 11th century castle and the Ray Domes of Flyingdales. Join me from Whitby to Pickering on Railway Adventures Across Europe. We'll soon be on a classic English railway adventure, one that takes us to a famous seaport, through forests, quaint villages, and across the wild English moors. As we travel, we'll learn what English engineering accomplished to keep the rails from sinking into the bogs. Our adventure begins in the county of Yorkshire at the coastal town of Whitby. From there, we'll steam across the moors to Pickering. We'll see a monument to whaling and visit a port favored by both Captain James Cook and Captain Scoresby, who invented the crow's nest. We'll travel an incredible gorge carved by ice thousands of years ago, encounter a cliff-top Anglo-Saxon monastery closed by Henry VIII, Pickering Castle, and a steam locomotive named Dame Vera Lynn. All this and moors, the English moors, by the North Yorkshire Moors Steam Railway. All aboard for Tracks to Moors. On the northeast coast of England, in the county of Yorkshire, stands the coastal town of Whitby, the starting point of our railway adventure to the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. Our adventure will take us from Whitby south to the bustling market town of Pickering, British Rail Sprinter trains run a regular service into Whitby, which lies at the eastern end of the picturesque Esk Valley Line. The town is dominated by its Clifftop Abbey, which was built in 1220 on the site of an Anglo-Saxon monastery. The abbey was closed in 1539 by Henry VIII and soon fell to ruin. The Church of St. Mary's has been built in recent times alongside the old abbey. The soft sandstone used for gravestones in this clifftop graveyard bears the scars of many years of erosion by the weather, which can be particularly harsh on this coastline. These huge whale jaw bones, placed here in 1963, are a reminder of the town's past links with the whaling industry. Captain James Cook is among the many famous connections Whitby has with the sea. And Captain Scoresby, the most successful and daring of all captains in the whaling industry, was the inventor of the crow's nest. Between the years 1753 and 1833, more than 50 sailing ships from Whitby were engaged in whaling activities. Over 2,500 whales were brought back to port where great boiler houses on the harbor side rendered the blubber into oil. Today, the area is lined with shops, restaurants, pleasure craft, and small fishing boats. At the harbor, modern freighters are unloaded. The town itself is typical of any small port. The houses crowd together in narrow back streets, almost touching in places across the narrow passageway. Cobbled streets and stone steps worn by centuries of use lead the way to the abbey. Whitby also boasts fine beaches at the foot of sloping cliffs to the west of the harbor.
Whitby was once an important rail station. The now closed East Coast Line served the town. The station seen here in its heyday has since been reduced to a single line. British Rail now runs from Whitby through Grossmont, where it meets the North Yorkshire Moors Railway Line. The railway is 18 miles long and runs from Grossmont to Pickering. In the yard, work's begun on the locomotive. Polishing, coaling, and oiling are all essential in the preparation of a steam locomotive for its day's work. A modern front-end loader fills the old engine's tender with coal. Lambton tank engine number five, built in 1905, is ready for its daily duties. Up next, cottages that rented for 12 cents a week when Railway Adventures returns. Our Railway Adventure along England's northeast coast continues as engine number five backs up at Grossmont Station to pick up its coaches. When the rail line was opened in 1836, the industrial village at Grossmont was established. With a population of over 1,500, most of the workforce was employed in the local ironwork. The name Grossmont comes from the word Grandemont, the name of the mother church in Normandy, from where monks came to found a monastery in 1204. Old number five is steamed up on a sunny day in England. Departing from the platform, the engine wheels slip as the powerful locomotive fights for traction. The LHJC on the engine side are the initials of the original owners, Lambton, Hedden, and Joycey Collieries. The locomotive hauled coal for all of its life before pulling passenger coaches on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. The Murkask River is crossed before the train plunges into a 360-foot long tunnel, emerging alongside the locomotive sheds. As the climb toward Gotham begins, both fireman and engineer work hard to maintain a steady speed. The 24 cottages at Esk Valley were built in 1870 and were rented to iron workers for the equivalent of 12 pence, about 12 cents per week. The hamlet relied on a train to run every two weeks to supply them with coal and provisions until 1951. Emerging from a tunnel, our train chugs slowly across the English countryside.
the Murkask River is crossed three times in half a mile. In places, there is an almost sheer drop of 100 feet to the valley floor. At Darnham, sleepy meadows next to the river provide an ideal picnic spot. The climb between Goatland and Grossmont is 1 in 49, among the steepest rail gradients in Great Britain. It replaced the 1 in 10 rope-worked incline which hauled rail cars from Beck Hole to Goatland between 1836 and 1865. The engineer has the Goatland station in sight. Goatland Station is the first stop on our railway adventure. Old number five crests the climb and coasts into the platform. The train is climbed for three and a half miles from Grossmont. We'll see where the phrase bogged down came from when Railway Adventures continues. We're back on England's North Yorkshire Moors Railway. We've arrived at the village of Goatland, a typical North Yorkshire rural community where sheep roam freely and the pace of life is slow and steady. Goatland Station itself has changed little since it was opened in July of 1865. The design of the station was typical of the Northeastern Railways in the 1860s. There are several identical stations on the British Rail Esk Valley line between Whitby and Middlesbrough. Stored at the station, this fearsome looking snowplow is a cold reminder of the harsh winters in this region. Before we catch the next train, there are a number of interesting features on the next section of rail line between Goatland and Newtondale. A mile past Goatland at Moorgates, the original 1836 route diverges. Remains of the track bed are still visible today. The original rail line used rope to pull the trains up between Goatland and Beck Hole. The new line, built in 1865, runs almost parallel at this point to the original line. The rails now have to cross open moorland before entering and following the Newtondale Gorge, which was formed at the end of the last ice age almost 10,000 years ago. The gorge is 14 miles long and in places 400 feet deep. On the highest point of this moorland stands the 150-foot-high ray domes of Flyingdales. These radar towers have stood watch 24 hours a day since 1964. 9,000 years ago, this area was dense woodland. When the trees died out, they formed this area of peat bog known today as Fen Bog. The peat is over 38 feet deep and caused the early railway builders many problems. 
they sank brushwood, timber, even sheep fleece filled with heather to produce a firm foundation. Today, Fen Bog is a nature reserve with a unique mixture of bog and fenland plants. The line now sweeps down into the forest surrounding Newtondale, past these ruins known as Carter's House. Sweeping around the long curves and past Carter's House ruin is British Southern Railway's Class S5, number 841, which spent much of its early life on mail and freight trains out of Waterloo. Our adventure continues from Goatland, where at the station we await the arrival of the engine named Vera Lynn on a Pickering-bound train. We'll board this train and continue on to Pickering. From our train, we'll be able to see the points of interest we just looked at in detail. At Moorgates, we pass the old line before crossing Fenbog and then Carter's House Ruin. From a high vantage point in Cropton Forest, the magnificent splendor of Newtondale is laid before us. Far below, the railway twists past Newtondale Halt. Accessible only by rail, the tiny station is an ideal stop-off point for hikers. British Railway Standard Class 80135 coasts into the station, nine and a half miles from Grossmont, deep in Cropton Forest. William the Conqueror's Castle, the railway adventures continue. Railway adventure continues on England's North Yorkshire Moors Railway. After a run of just two and a half miles through forested steep walls of Newtondale Gorge, our train arrives at Levisham Station. The road from the station to the village of Levisham climbs 300 feet up the gorge, providing a spectacular vantage point to watch the trains come and go. The small community of Levisham is one and a half miles away from the station. A short walk across the moors from here brings us to Skelton Tower. Resembling the ruins of an ancient castle keep, the tower has stood here since 1850. It was erected by the Reverend Robert Skelton to provide a quiet spot for him to write his sermon. Today, it provides one of the most famous and spectacular views of the railway. We continue on to Pickering. The four miles of rail line between Newbridge and Levisham was double track from 1845 till 1917 when one track was removed to help the war effort. The metals never reached their destination in France. The ship carrying them was torpedoed and the track now lies deep in the English Channel. Pickering is the end of the line for the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. Originally, the line continued on south through Malton. For the return to Grossmont Station, the locomotives will run around their coaches and take on water and passengers.
Pickering itself is a busy market town where local farmers bring their goods to sell. Market day is alive with activity and the streets are filled with stands. High on the hill overlooking the station stands Pickering Castle, founded by William the Conqueror in the 11th century. For most of its useful life, it controlled hunting in the nearby forest and provided accommodations for the king and his relatives. Our arrival and short tour of Pickering completes this railway adventure on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. We'll take the wine and dine special for the return trip to Grossmont in Whitby. The North Yorkshire Moors Railway offers a classic blend of English heritage, scenic splendor, and railway and maritime history. We hope you've enjoyed Tracks to Moors. I'm Bernie Coppell. Join me on the next Railway Adventures Across Europe.